Good morning, folks. I'm Dan. New little project today. We are going to begin building a digital touch probe, very much like this one. And this is a kinematic style probe, um, very similar to what Renishaw used to build. And I find it interesting because it's kind of old technology in the um, digital probe world from what I understand, but it's also what Tormac is still using on some of their digital probes. But I've seen the insides of them and, and um, seen a description of them and they're uh, the same thing as a kinematic style uh, touch probe. And for the home shop and for what I use on my CNC machines, why they work really good. This is one I built and um, I'm going to build two more of them is what I'm building and there's a couple of reasons for that. This is the second one that I built which is the same design but we've got a touch pad on top for measuring tool height to set offsets. So several reasons I'm building them. One of them is for my little uses they work really well. They're a, they're a great little setup. They're um, accurate enough for the class of work that I do on my machines and uh, one of the other reasons is they're dirt cheap to build. You know it's a great little shop project they cost almost nothing you know, by comparison, I, I think probably these can be built for in the neighborhood of twenty to twenty-five dollars. Is probably what I've got invested in materials. Let me move this camera down to the table so you can see what's going on. We'll take this one apart. Okay, so hopefully we can get down here where we can see this. These are probes that I built quite a while ago. This is not my design. This is uh, actually this was a project in Digital Machinist from I think fall of uh, or winter of two thousand eleven. I'll have to go back and look. I'll put that in the description below. There's a couple of changes I'm going to make to it. One of the reasons I'm going to build different ones is on my mill especially. Now I'm going to build one for the mill and one for the lathe. And I'm going to set these two aside. They both work fine. This one I've had apart so it needs to be recalibrated. The touch probe I will probably continue to use on the mill to set tool heights. I don't use it a tremendous amount but I should get more in the habit of it. Part of the reason I don't use these as much as I should is because they sit in my in my uh, drawer here at the at the bench rather than being stored over next to the machines. So anyway the, re the way these work is it's plugged into your control software which in my case is Mach 3 and this sits in your spindle on your on your mill would be the example of it plugged into the control board and you can use a probing program to set your offsets or set your zeros on on where you're referencing your machine in relation to a part is where I normally use it. So if we have a part here, so if we're looking down at our, our mill from the top and here's our mill table type of thing and maybe we've got a vise set up here that's holding our part. When we put our part in here we've got it clamped in place and if we want to reference this back corner what we'll do is we'll set this at the back corner uh, start the probing program it will come up and contact this point here record that in the software when it touches why it offsets there it'll back out come around to the corner does the same thing from this side um, then it will retract up and come over to where the edge of the probe is over that over the corner and that will set your zero for where your uh, your part is so they're really useful there's other uses for them in the in the shop you know if you've got them on your CNC machines um, you can run fully automated programming pro or uh, probing program so if you've got that set up on your table you can have your uh, mill automatically stop the spindle move over the top of it and touch off to give you your tool height make sure you don't have a broken tool or something like that for unattended machining I don't use it for that but there's kind of endless possibilities with it in the lathe I plan on using it on my little CNC lathe to basically set um, part length when I advance stock, why I'll use this to set zero for where the end of the stock is to, to begin my cut. So we'll know where that is. And that's going to be the main function I use it for in the in the lathe, although I've got a couple of other ideas that may be useful. I think this particular one can, I'll probably set back and I've got some ideas where it can be used on a manual machine with a digital readout and can zero off your digital readout. So like I say, possibilities are endless with them in the home shop. But anyway, one of the reasons I want a new one for the mill is I mainly use the Tormac tooling which is three quarter inch shanked uh, machines and I want one of these set up with a Tormac uh, spindle or a three quarter inch shank so that I can use it and I can quickly interchange that into the into the spindle. Now I could mount this one into a Tormac tool holder. They make a tool holder specifically to hold their touch probe 
For my uses, I'm just going to machine a Tormac style tool holder. I uh, had initially thought that I would turn it to that point or a little bit oversized from that and drill it in three equidistant points around the top and affix it to the top of, a, of the probe. What I think I'm going to do is just get some two inch stock and I'll just turn the cap, the cap from solid stock, go ahead and thread it so the body threads into it. These are pretty straightforward. It's made out of Schedule 40 aluminum pipe, which I'll cut a piece out of this material here. And the end caps are two inch material. I think you need an inch of, inch of it is what they actually call for. I've got a piece that we'll, we'll cut pieces out of. Um, but I think what I'll do is I'll just turn my spindle for the... Let's go ahead and take this apart and um, show you the insides of it. Like I say, they're pretty straightforward. The cap they're using a turn down socket head cap screw for the for the stud to go through. Like I say, I'll, I'm going to turn this out of solid stock. I believe that'll alleviate having to do that. I'll make it a little bit thicker, very much like a Tormac tool holder, so we get that rigidity there. And that's part of the problem here is I think we get a little bit of flex even in this when we run it all the way up into the spindle and and do it. I think there's room for some variation. So I think if we convert this top piece to a Tormac style, that will add quite a bit of rigidity and get, make it a little more accurate. Anyway, there's our top piece. They're threaded, um, 20 threads per inch, and uh, then whatever's appropriate for the for the tubing. I don't remember exactly what it is. We've got a spring to hold it. We should be centered up here a little bit better, shouldn't we? We've got a spring to provide tension to our tip. This is our probing tip, and the kinematic style has three um, positioning points. So whichever way it tips off of it breaks contact inside, and that's what uh, that's what gives you your reading that you've you've contacted offset. Let's see if we can look down inside. The circuit board in there is just a piece of uh, printed circuit board, and these have been CNC'd out, and that's one of the that's probably the next part that we'll do of this is CNCing out this this uh, circuit board. It could just as easily be etched and then drilled. Um, you know, a couple three different ways of doing it. But what it does is we've got three ball bearings down in there. That's what our brass knobs or our brass studs ride on. So it sits down in there just like that on those ball bearings. And any time it offsets, why it breaks contact in the circuit. All three of those have to be in contact to complete that circuit. Once it breaks that, why it um, diverts the current through an LED and a resistor, which lights up in the side. Some uh, controllers, from what I understand, will not light up the, the LED. Um, the LED and the resistor are not absolutely necessary, they say. It's just uh, nice to have that little visual indication. But anyway, we've just taken the printed circuit board. It's drilled all the way through. And uh, then our ball bearings are soldered onto it to, to give us contact. Really simple system. little uh, nylon or hard plastic is what holds our contact point or our yeah, our contact rods and then our contact tip. One of the changes I am going to do to these is um, I'm going to convert this. This is a turned down shoulder bolt, which is recommended in the in the uh, article. What I'm going to do is go to a small ball bearing and solder it to a piece of carbide. I think probably two millimeter carbide is what they're using. And I'm trying to somewhat duplicate what Tormac is doing because at some point in time I will probably upgrade to Tormac machines. So, or at least a Tormac mill. So uh, I kind of following that tooling system, that's what I'm setting up with, so I'm not having to make too many changes. So that's the, that's the general plan, and that's the way they work. It's super straightforward, you know, they're, it's not anything that's real complicated. The circuit board itself is held in place with silicone. We've got six silicone points around the edge here that that silicone is sandwiched down onto. There's three set screws and that's what gives us our adjustment as to where the probe is going to be so we can zero it out and center it up when we set it up for our mill or lathe, whatever we're going to use it for. So straightforward process. I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut the tubing, cut the pieces for the nose cap. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to worry about the end cap. And um, we'll set those up in the lathe, start machining them. We'll get our We'll get our plastic machined out and um, maybe drilled for our rods and see how much we can get going. So we'll go from there. Three millimeter stereo plug added in there and uh, 
It works really well. For the screen sets for the probing program in Mach 3, I'm using Haas Machine's screen set. He's still got that, or it was still online, and uh, it seems to work well. So that's where we're at. Let's get to machining some parts. Anyway, hopefully you found something a little entertaining here. If you did, why uh, you might want to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. And if you like these videos, give me a thumbs up. You might want to share them. And as always, thanks for taking the time to watch.